Oh, the barrier reef's not doing well at all. Um, like every other coral reef around the world, it's impacted by various human activities, the most pressing one almost everywhere now being global warming. We didn't expect to see bleaching this year because of the La Nina forecasts. So the climate modelers are saying we no longer need El Nino events to trigger bleaching now and into the future. It can happen every year due to global warming and we're very close to that now. Coral reefs, like um, any other ecosystem, have uh, an innate, uh, evolved capacity to recover from the kinds of shocks that they have grown used to over thousands or millions of, of years. But they have not evolved to cope with mass mortality every two or three years, which is what we're seeing now. Science tells us that the Great Barrier Reef has never been under so much strain. For an ecosystem as ancient as this one, it's a demonstration of the damage that human-induced climate change is causing. There's a choice to be made here. The reef may never return to its past splendor, but experts do believe that it can be saved. That can only happen if global warming is mitigated and investment made to ensure that the corals can endure a hotter planet. So the research that we're doing uh, is around a reef restoration intervention called coral seeding. So the coral seeding method is where we take uh, larval corals, so just after spawning, we settle those down onto what we call seeding devices. These are very small polyps, about a millimeter in size, and then those seeding devices provide a really nice protective house for those corals that then get seeded out onto the coral reef. Technology often produces step changes in this process and so that's really what we're trying to do is push the envelope to develop systems that can give us that step change up from producing a few thousand corals or a hundred thousand of corals a year to you know on the order of millions. That's really what's going to be required if we're to um, have, have any uh, effect on the coral populations on the reef. We know that in recent years there has been progress. Governments, industries, communities are moving to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. We have many of the technologies that we need. In many places those are being implemented well and emissions are being reduced. We just also know that globally not enough is being done fast enough yet. So we have to lift our ambition. But if we are determined and we are willing to do more, then absolutely I am optimistic for the future of the Great Barrier Reef.